So when we went in Detroit, we stopped at Micro Center. Uh, at that time, I look and there are some US exclusive that uh, we're not able to get in Canada for hardware, like the home brand, like uh, inline for the NVMe or power spec for the PSU. So I decided to get one just to be able to test it. It can go to 7,000 Mbps for the reading speed and 5,000 for the writing speed. I would have preferred their gaming, uh, one from their gaming line, which can go up to 6,800 like Mbps or even a Gen 5, but like they didn't have any in stock for their gaming performance one. And the Gen 5 drive price was like quite high. But it's not necessarily a bad thing because they seem to create more like eat that like a Gen 4 drive. So I'll still need to test them just to see because my motherboard support them. But for now, it's totally fine. At the price I bought it for 80 uh, US dollars, it was not competitively priced even when on sale. But because it was one that I could not get in Canada easily, I just thought it would be super interesting to test. Of course, you need to look at writing speed and reading speed because they had cheaper cheapest drive at like cheaper drive at sixty dollars if you wanted something that is more in part with the PC part bigger price. Also, uh, checked if it was PS five compatible for the writing speed and reading speed because the plan was uh, to test it against the S seventy blade that is my Windows drive and then take the micro center one and just put it in my playstation 5. on the specs page it's basically saying that you need a gen 4 drive that can read over 5000 mbps so that's the case for that drive i will test it against the s70 blade that's been my windows boot drive uh, for a while so i'm gonna do a fresh installer windows on boot drive and use them at boot drive and compare the speed with synthetic benchmark and game to see if I see a difference. Not much for the unboxing because it's a NVMe drive. I didn't really feel like uh, removing the stickers to see who's making it for Micro Center, but that's their in-house brand. You can see it compared to uh, the drive that was in my ROG Ally and uh, Micro Center USB-C and USB-A stick. I also got a generic eat thing from Amazon just to use it on this PS5 because it is recommended. It comes in three pieces and you need to put it together but it's not really that complicated. You have some double side tape to install uh, the cooler and the eat thing on top of it. They give you spare one. After a fresh install of Windows, let's do some testing. 3D Mark storage is first. For the S70 Blade, you get to a score of 3364, while you, I got a score of 2524 for the inline 1TB Performance Plus. Crystal Disk Mark was next. For the reading speed, I both got a score of 7400 uh, megabyte for the reading. But the writing was uh, interesting because the drive uh, specs is 5,500. But on this test, I got a result of 6,500. So one gig more for the speed. Envil storage is next. The total score for the S70 blade is 20,110. While the total score for the uh, inland 1TB is 20,500. So I think in the end we can see that both drive are really performing kind of the same. After those synthetic tests, I decided to put the drive in my PlayStation. I really appreciate how Sony made it easy to add a drive to your console. The toughest part was to look at the quick video or to remove the PlayStation faceplate. And also they provide you the space to put different size NVMe, which is always appreciated. The drive was detected on boot and after a quick formatting, the console tested for the speed of the drive. We got 6,200 
which is good enough to be supported by the PlayStation 5. The first test I did is to copy God of War Ragnarok and Final Fantasy VII Remake Rebirth from the internal to the external and from the external to the internal just to see if there was a speed difference. There was a big one. That test was super interesting. I basically uh, copied God of War Ragnarok and Final Fantasy Rebirth, which in total is 231 gig, from the internal drive to the inland, and then from the inland to the internal rebooting before each test. I did the test maybe four times just to make sure that like everything was normal. It only took two minutes 25 or two minutes 35 to just copy uh, from the internal to the one terabyte. But moving the game from the drive to the internal took 15 minutes 34, which is a big difference. There's a big difference there, but at the same time, you're not going to be moving game that often. So real world test is more interesting. Next test was loading time between uh, Final Fantasy Rebirth and Ragnarok uh, on the internal and then on the inland NVMe SSD. It took three seconds less to load Rebirth, 17 versus 14 seconds uh, in the inland, and one second less to load Ragnarok, 22 seconds versus 23. After that, I loaded the game for 10 minutes and played them on the internal and then on the inland one terabyte performance plus drive. And I could not really see or you know, spot any like difference in gameplay. So I think the experience is quite comparable. So what are the conclusions for this drive? So for the positive, the drive is competitively uh, priced. It's $64.99 USD right now. But of course, NVMe drive always go on sale, so you need to check with other brands. I think the performance was good. Like on the PS5, I could not really notice a difference while playing games and loading them. And you also have a six year limited warranty by Micro Center. On the negative side, there's no eating include. Of course, you can buy a cheap one from Amazon and it's not abnormal on the budget category for uh, NVMe drive, but it would still be nice to have one. Also, the performance can fluctuate it. I would sometimes run a, a test two or three times and get like two of them that would be the same, but one that would be way over or way lower. And that PS5 to copying to uh, internal performance was like strange, but at the same time, because it's not something you'll do often. I still think that the drive is totally fine and good for a PlayStation 5 usage. Thanks for watching.